from reading your blog, I uh, really enjoyed and really uh, kind of planted a splinter in my mind about subjective reality, and it's just a different model to look at reality. I was wondering if you would like to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, so, you know, to contrast, an objective reality is this idea that we live in a completely objective universe, a universe of objects. So we have this planet Earth, and you know, this planet's orbiting a star, and stars in a galaxy, and one of you know many many galaxies out there, and this big physical space-time universe. And we are biological beings. We're human beings. You know, we were born, we grow up, we die, uh, and our consciousness is basically an artifact of our bodies. It's an artifact of our brains. You are physical neural networks in our head composed of about 100 billion neurons firing somehow gives rise to consciousness and that we are conscious beings and our consciousness is rooted in this physical body. And so if our body dies, our consciousness dies, or maybe in some way it gets detached from our body and lives on in some other you know, universe, but then our consciousness is basically still an object in some larger container, you know, the container universe, maybe some other dimension or something, who knows. But on the other hand, the subjective reality perspective is that consciousness is primary and physical forms arise within consciousness. So the physical universe is basically just what we see right now, like a simulation. So while we're here you know, in the street corner in Oslo, Norway, Paris doesn't exist, the rest of the world doesn't exist. Uh, only, what only exists is what we see in front of us. And a good analogy for understanding that is imagine you're having a nighttime dream right now. This is what you're experiencing. You just don't realize you're dreaming. So you, you know, might imagine that everything else out there exists that you're not seeing, but really it's just all entirely a construction of your imagination. And this table is imaginary. It's not a real physical object. And because if you were having a dream, you could create a scene this detail. I've done that many times before. And you know, have interactions with people. But you and I then are not separate beings. We're just, you know, this body doesn't really exist. It's just an imaginary construct inside the dream or inside the dreamer. Then of course the question is like, what is that outer container? Or what is the dreamer? And you can go you know, down a deep rabbit hole without some questions there. The interesting thing is you can't actually uh, prove that reality works one way or the other. Because there's this, essentially an equivalency principle that lets you translate from one system to the other. So it's not like one is true and the other is false or vice versa. It's more like one is the perspective of looking through your left eye and the other one is the perspective of looking through your right eye. Neither one is true. They're just different assumptions about what reality looks like. And you can look through either lens and see and notice different things about reality. When they look like they're contra contradicting each other, it basically means you're looking at something with this kind of perspective, where one eye can't see it and the other eye does. So this eye says, oh, I see the scene in front of me. There's people here and there's buses and trams driving behind, behind us and there's stores over here. And the other side says, says, no, no, there's nothing there. It's just a blank, blank, empty, dark space. And they, the two eyes can argue with each other, but then eventually, you know, the blinders may be moved and then you get an argument that goes like this. And if you keep you know, shifting back and forth between both perspectives, you see that any time they seem to disagree with each other, it's really an illusion. And that actually, they're always in agreement with each other. So whatever happens on the objective side, you can explain it subjectively and vice versa. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, well, as I've started to uh, kind of internalize the subjective model, it's, it's almost kind of scary because you can realize that there's almost infinite possibilities to do and explore anything that you can imagine. Absolutely. Which has been kind of mind-blowing for me. Yep. Um, but yeah, I like to find where the overlap is between the objective reality and subjective reality. Mm -hmm. And the biggest uh, obstacle I've found is whether, when you look at it subjectively, do you find other people in your subjective universe as being real and also experiencing their own subjective reality within yours? It's kind of a... I do find them as being real, but then I find if I'm expecting them to have their own independent thoughts, I realize where is my projection of that? It's all in my mind. You know, so even in a, on an objective level, if you think about what the other person might be thinking or saying, you don't have access to that. You, know, you don't have access to any consciousness except for one. So you can see how the physical body's walking around, but how many consciousnesses do you perceive? Always just one. And so you realize that whatever you're projecting on the other person is not in them, it's coming from you. And so then you realize, I can actually change in my mind what I think the other person is thinking in their own head. Yeah. And so you can actually start kind of becoming a reverse paranoid where you just assume everything's positive and that's going on in other people's minds. Give everyone and everything the benefit of the doubt. The funny thing is, is that even though you might see that as being a little bit self-delusional, it often works. You know, you give people the benefit of the doubt and they behave that way. I remember doing this experiment where, you know, I noticed I was calling, uh, this back when I was married, I was calling my wife messy. And I was like, oh, you're being so messy. And then I said, wait a minute, that thought is in my mind. Can I reprogram that? So without telling her, 
I just started reprogramming my mind and thinking, she's neat. She's a really neat person. She's so clean. If I think she's messy, it's just because I'm being overly critical and I'm not noticing things. And so I said, she's a really, really, really very neat person. The funny thing is, she started she started cleaning up the house without me even asking her. And I said, so why are you doing that? She's like, I don't know. I just felt the urge to start cleaning. <laughs> and then I told her about the experiment. She's like, weird. You know, what, what happened there? It's almost like you can reprogram the dream characters as if you put in a lucid dream. Mm -hmm. And you start actually just changing your thinking about what you expect to see. And maybe because I had that thought before that she was messy, maybe she would have done the cleaning either way, but I wouldn't have noticed it. Or I said, oh yeah, clean up that little bit over there, but what about all this stuff over here? And so, you know, are you observing reality or creating it? Well, it just depends on which lens you're looking through. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> Attractive by social standards, like they could be a model or a stripper or something like that. Um, but then, I just don't feel the kind of chemistry with them that I would